Hello there, Texas Deacon here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your emails. I enjoy them, I read them, and they influence me. I struggled long and hard over what to call this lesson. I came up with nothing that pleased me. I felt I was giving a disclaimer as a radio and TV station will give to some of the programming. Eventually, I had to choose a title and I did. During this lesson, I would likely touch on some subject matter that I will donate a full lesson to at a later time. I've entitled this lesson, The Ugly Truth About Many Christians. Friends of mine encouraged me to do the Texas Deacon series because they felt I had something to offer to some people. Many years ago, I learned that no matter what you do, how you do, when you do, where you do it, that you're not going to please everybody. In fact, sometimes you don't please anyone. Remember the story of Lucifer? He was in heaven. He was God's favorite. He was not even happy with that. Here we are out here just trying to get to heaven, be happy to be have a little spot over in one corner, and he was God's favorite. Some people you just can't please no matter what. I am very political, but as I said, my friends encouraged me to do the Texas Deacon, which is my first love anyway, because we have plenty of politicals and not enough evangelists. One of the basic responsibilities of a Christian is to bring new converts to Christ, to evangelize. If through my efforts here and other works the Spirit is doing through me, I'm able to bring just one person to Christ who would not have made it otherwise. When I stand before God, he will look at me and say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I really want to hear those words, and you want to hear them too, believe me, you do. I've covered a lot of ground here, I guess, and not gotten around to the subject, but don't give up on me. I'm concerned that some who have had no contact with churches or church people will have the impression that church people are pure and holy they're living angels, they not only never do anything wrong, they never have impure thoughts even, nothing. This is just not the way it is. Only God is pure and holy. But Christians have a responsibility to be as pure and holy as they can. A Christian works daily toward perfecting holiness, fully knowing they will never achieve it. It's only achieved in the life hereafter. There's some little sayings I've heard over the years I'd like to share with you about many Christians, too many in fact. And they go like this. What do you get when you lead an obnoxious person to Christ? Answer, you get an obnoxious Christian. What do you get when you lead a lazy person to Christ? Again, a lazy Christian. What if you get when you lead a liar to Christ. You're a Christian who stretches and bends the truth just a little too much. What do you get if you lead a thief to Christ? Too many times you end up with a Christian with sticky fingers. We all heard on the news stories about high officials in the church dipping into church funds. Don't be too quick to place blame. A lot of blame has to go to the church's poor accounting that allows this to happen. Scripture tells us we are not to tempt anyone to do wrong. Sometimes as Christians, we become too trusting, and Satan will never miss an opportunity to take advantage of a weakness, and all Christians are human and full of weakness. Remember, all Christians have weaknesses. When you 
become a Christian, you associate yourself with a body, a church body, you will probably be amazed at some of the people calling themselves Christian. Do not be judging these people. The Lord is their judge, and he doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help either. God is well qualified to handle the job all by himself. If you continue your Christian walk, you will see a lot of, of these church members grow into someone you will look up to. I still look up to a lot of people. Don't misunderstand what I have said here. I thank God it, for every pew warmer. And a pew warmer to me is just a person, they, they come at the last minute and sit on the pew, they do nothing, and they leave soon the church is over. I thank God for them and wish I had many, many more of them in the church I attend. As a Christian, your primary relationship is not to the pastor, not with the elders or deacons, not with the teachers or fellow church members, but with Jesus Christ. You must be, have a daily one-on-one -on -one relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Anything left less than that is totally unacceptable. You won't be there the first day you accept Christ. You will grow into it. Some people grow slower than others. Some people grow faster than others. By study and where your heart is will determine the rate at which you grow. Don't be one of those Christians how you have to keep feeding milk to, as the scripture says. Be one of those Christians that can eat strong meat is also mentioned in the Bible. The choice is all yours. I can't make it for you. May God bless America. May God bless Texas. May God bless you and yours.